Hi guys, it's Hannah, and today we are going to be making a little shrinky dink plastic keychain. So, what you need is a coloring sheet or a print off, something that has an image, or you can draw something if you would like. You need a pair of scissors, a hole punch or something to cut a hole with, you need tape, and you need shrink plastic or shrink film, shrinky dink plastic, something like that. I'm using this shrink film, um, yeah. You need something to color with, so I am using these Bic markers and Sharpies and Prismacolor markers. They are permanent. You can use colored pencils, but you need to sand the plastic. Um, one thing that you need to do if you're using Sharpies is just have something to protect the surface you're using. So I'm just using some paper. So, um, the first thing you want to do is obviously get the image. The second thing is to preheat the oven so it's ready when you're done coloring. So follow the instructions for the plastic. So mine was 350 degrees, it could be different for you. So first, I'm just gonna leave this like this. Just like that. <laughs> then I'm gonna take the plastic and sort of measure how much I need. So, I need about like this much, so I'll just take like a Sharpie. I'm gonna wanna leave room for like a hole. So I'm just taking about that much, leaving room for testing colors. Then I want to take the scissors and I just wanna cut along that line. So there we go. I'm just going to set this off to the side so that you can use it for another one if you want to do something a little smaller. Then I just want to sort of, well not sort of, but just line it up like this and then I want to take my tape and I want to put, I want to tape the plastic to the paper and then tape the paper to my background just so it doesn't move while I am trying to work. Now, if you would like to be able to turn yours, you can just leave this part untaped. I'm only going to use about two pieces for each little area. down. Now the next thing that I'm going to do is actually color it. So I'm thinking that I'm going to do like a rainbow here, you know, because it's a rainbow. And then we'll go from there. So I'm just going to start with that. So of course I'm going to start with red. It looks pink, but it's a red marker. <laughs> Now one thing is, you want to get all of the line, get all of the lines even, because it will be really streaky if you don't, and you don't want to cover it up constantly, because it would get very messy, and it will have this weird texture once it's it comes out of the oven after it gets smaller. So there we go. Now we're going to go to orange because it goes red, orange, yellow, so on.
just like that. Um, it's pretty easy to do. It's simple. And you can use whatever image you want. So now I'm going to move on to yellow. Now one thing you have to remember is the colors won't be as opaque as you think they are. Because when you take it off, it's going to be because the pl plastic is clear. So you have to remember that. So some very light pale blues and grays, they don't really show up. Um, because the plastic is clear and they're very light colors. And you also have to rem remember when it shrinks, the colors will become more opaque. So the red might actually be red once it comes out of the oven. I think I'm going to go for a lime green. So when I'm looking at this coloring sheet, it looks like there's not enough room for purple, which is okay. Just a little sad. But one thing is I have to choose what color blue I want because I have several different colors of blue. Like, oh, that one's too light. One second. Like I have several different colors, so I need to test them on like the edge. Like that one's pretty. It's more of an aqua blue. This one's like blue, blue. That one is very, very blue. So I think I'm actually going to go with this darker blue because it's also sort of purple. So I'm just going to be careful about lines because for the most part, it is very smearable. I also want to make sure that I'm getting up close to those lines because the black lines aren't actually there and because, you know, we're coloring on top of something. So we're going to have to go back and do those lines in black. So there's our rainbow. So the next thing I think that we're going to do is, well, I'm going to do is go over the lines in black. So basically I'm going to use a fine, like an ultra fine point Sharpie marker. Because we don't want those lines to be super big. You want to be super careful doing this because you don't want to go like that and then it messes the picture up and then you have to use even more plastic because this is a lot of plastic like the container had six sheets in it and this is almost a whole sheet of plastic so you want to be careful about that And see, I needed to be a little bit more careful because I went over the mouth and wasn't really paying attention, so you need to be careful. Okay, we're almost done with this part. So we have the rainbow completely done. 
but we kind of want to get all the other lines filled in, not filled in, but gone over. So I'm just going to go over all those lines. Okay, so we have one cloud done. Now we're gonna do the other one. I'm gonna go ahead and go over this little piece right here. was a little messy right there, but that's okay. Okay, so now that the clouds and the rainbow and a little bit of the unicorn have been, you know, covered with black, the lines, I'm just going to finish that and go more into detail because I just did a little outline on that one part. It's important to outline in black so, you know, people know for like things that are clear or that have very light colors that they're there. So it's not just like a rainbow, rainbow with a unicorn and there's no clouds. You want to make sure that they're, you know, there. So, I have the tail almost done. There we go. So, the tail's done. This little leg is done. So, I think I'm going to go in here. And just do these little lines. And do the little details. But, I'm going to save the eye because I might not want to have it black like that so I'm just gonna wait on that but I'm gonna go down the horse's limbs and just get all of these little lines done like that so now I'm gonna work on this hoof and leg Now that's done, and then I'm going to go over this part right there. For the most part, you want to go in one continuous, continuous motion. But there are some things you will, you don't have to stop for. You want to make sure that you do all of the lines and you don't miss any. So like there was something hiding right there that we wanted, we want to make sure we have in the picture outlined. Okay, there we go. So pretty much everything on the horse is outlined. Whoopsie. <laughs> so I'm just gonna. Oh, you want to be careful about that. Just gonna do the ears real quick. It doesn't have to be perfect. You know, it's just a little keychain.
the hair is one of the more complicated things in this picture because there's so many lines like this little area I'm like um what is this <laughs> There we go. Now I'm going to do the lines inside the hair. Really quick. You might have to have like little breaks to let it dry. Because Sharpie does take a minute or two to dry. I'm going to do the other ear real quick. Do that little line. Do the little hair in the front. Okay, so everything but the horn is outlined. So there's that. And I'm going to do all of these tiny little lines that make it look like a unicorn horn. So it is all outlined. So now I can color the picture. Well, the rest of it anyway. Um, I don't know what color I want to do for the clouds or if I just want to leave them clear. I think I might actually leave them clear or do like a silver on them. I think I'll leave it clear because the colors that are like more silvery like this they have this weird residue on it whenever it shrinks it gets this weird texture and I don't like it so I think I might just leave the clouds clear but I'm actually going to go in with a black sharpie that's just a fine point gonna make sure it works first okay it does and then just go in and color those just like that and then all four are done I still don't know what color I want to make the horse so I'm just gonna work on the horn which is also going to be rainbow. So, just going to get out all of the colors. So, red, orange, yellow. Then I'm going to use the lime green again. Green, and then blue and purple. Which I am actually going to use purple in this one because I have room. <laughs> so, I'm going to start at the top. And it might not show, but that's okay. So I'm just going to repeat the pattern after because there's going to be way more spaces than one rainbow. Green. We have our blue in there. That's really pretty. Purple. So just going to do the first oh, four colors <laughs> for the next part. Okay, last one. No, I think that this unicorn might have brown or pink hair. So I'll get out some of the pinks that I have and see if there's one that I think will work and that will show up 
like that's a really pretty peak but then you can't see it when I lift the paper the plastic up from the page so I think I'm gonna go with this pink it looks really vibrant because it is very vibrant I'm trying to avoid those black lines because sometimes with Sharpie, Sharpie can smear Sharpie. So, trying to be careful. Sometimes this can be a little tricky because you need to get up really close to the Sharpie when it's black, but then you, it like smears and gets all muddy or the sharpie goes over the other sharpie and then it doesn't look right so you have to be pretty careful so when you're coloring try to pay attention to where the lines are so it's almost done It does kind of look like there's a third ear, <laughs> but maybe the unicorn has three ears. Now that I'm thinking, maybe the unicorn is black with pink hair. That could work. I have a second brown. And I think I might have a third brown in the Sharpie bin that is beside me. Nope. Let's see what this brown looks like. Nope. <laughs> I do have a Prisma color. Like, I like that color. But it doesn't really... Well, I guess it does show up. I think I'm going to use this color, a Prismacolor dark brown. Because I think it will look really good. I'm trying to avoid all those lines. And I'm not coloring the tail brown, I'm going to color it pink, I'm just going to do it in a second. But I am going to just make like a little connector line. Now that we're up into the torso section, I'm going to actually go in with the thick side. So with like thick tips or broad tips, that's what it says. With broad tips, you want to be a little bit careful with the lines that are already on in a different color because you can go right over them without a problem, which is a blessing and a curse. Now I'm going to go back to the fine side, and I'm just going to go around these little edges. And one thing that I did just notice is that I forgot to outline the head. So let me grab the fine point sharpie. I would say the head's a pretty important Pretty, pretty important thing. Okay, there we go. So now I'm going to go back in <laughs> with the fine point and just go around all of these little areas.
Okay, so I'm just going to go in over here. And fill in what I have not colored yet. And go close up to those lines, keeping it close but not just going over it. That is key. Now I have to do the eye, which I think I might just take a the fine, ultra fine, I keep saying fine, ultra fine Sharpie marker and just give them a black like eye because if you look at horses they don't really have an eye color at least I don't think they do so I'm just gonna do this their eyes are usually like brown but they look a little darker so I'm just gonna go in like that then I'm gonna go with the broad tip again Kind of did a no no. I just went really close to the black. I'm just going to outline the eye and then I'm going to go around like that. Okay, so we have the leg left, which is really simple. Gonna go in with the tiny part, go into the tinier part. There we go. And go up. So, the horse is colored, except for the hair. So, we need, I need to finish the hair. And I need to do the ears. So, I actually need this marker again. I'm just gonna go on the outside. Because that is it. And then I'm going to go in with this marker on the inside of the ear. It looks a little bit orange, but that's okay. I can deal. Now I'm going to finish the tail. And this little fluff part, I don't know what you would call this. And as you can see, the pink blended with the black. Which is not exactly what we wanted, but I don't have a fine tip. Oopsie. <laughs> okay. I'm trying to get most of those away. Oh, there we go. So now I'm going to go do the tail. I'm making sure to avoid the blue and the cloud. Just gonna do a quick outline. Okay. Almost done with the coloring. Oh, there's a little more. Okay, so that is everything that needs to be colored. Now the next step that you want to do is untape it. You can leave the paper down for now. So there it is. It's pretty cute. I like it. It looks good. I'm just going to go ahead and take the tape off the corners. Just set that down. But the next thing I want to do is I want to punch a hole with a hole punch. I found that that works best. So I want to make sure there's enough room, but it doesn't go onto the picture like that. So I want to put it like right 
here. Now, it is a little hard. And then we just have a hole. Because it's plastic. It's not like a piece of paper. <laughs> um, now, I am not going to cut it, like, out perfectly. I'm going to sort of just round like this. Now, after you cut it out, that's pretty much it. You just need to put it in the oven at the temperature that the package said for how many minutes it said. And then you should have a little shrinky dink. But then you want to put like a keychain or something to attach it, like a little key ring, you know what I'm talking about, in there. And then that's it. Then you have a keychain. Key Bye!